Made some great progress last night. Got uh, got the hinges all welded in place, and uh, all of this is, is now functional. Here I got the the main portions of the belt grinder all welded and assembled together. I'm going to go ahead and go over some of these little low spots from the welding that, that didn't quite machine out, and I'm actually going to fill them with Bondo, just smooth them out, sand them down. There's just little tiny pits all over it. And then I picked up some cool uh, MF Red tractor and truck paint. I'm going to try using that. Pick this up at Tractor Supply for $12 or something. I'm going to use that for actually painting it. Here's a bit of a close-up. So you can see a few of the, the little blemishes that need to be pulled out of it. Well, there's no real reason to do the filling or anything. I figured it would just be fun. These ones here, not the best of welds. I ended up kind of overdoing it. It went a little bit too slow. I ground this one down a little bit to make it look a little nicer, but uh, for the most part, I, I just have no real easy way to get in here and grind. So. I get it. it's not something I needed to do anyway so I'll just be painting over those I was here about to get started and I just realized that you know not everybody's used Bondo before I was gonna bundle all that up and then just kind of show it after you know of it being finished I'll go ahead and uh, do a quick show of uh, you know mixing Bondo and pushing it into the, the parts to the holes and then uh, waiting for it to cure and coming back and sanding it down. So this I, just, I picked up at Walmart. Just a, a small can, the smallest can that they had. So I don't, I don't need very much. I think it was uh, $6 or so. When you get it, it's pretty thick not quite almost as thick as as peanut butter a little thinner but not much and it's got quite an odor you want to make sure you're in a open and well ventilated area it really does not take very much especially for the the type of filling I'm going to be doing here but one thing it does do it puts you on a time limit Once you put the hardener, this cream hardener in it, you have usually about five minutes or so before it begins to cure, at which point it gets where you, you can't really work with it anymore. And then it only takes probably about 10 or 15 minutes, ah, probably a little longer than that, maybe 20 minutes, before it's hard enough to sand. And usually you want to do it a little bit early because it'll be a lot easier to sand at first and uh, then it slowly cures and then this stuff I just squirt a little bit in there I know there's a actual measurement you're supposed to do so much per so much I've never done that and I've always had pretty decent results If you've ever wondered why Bondo was pink, it's the hardener that turns it pink. And it actually starts off gray. And I'm definitely going to have plenty to do what I need to do on this here. And these, I could have went back and filled them with weld might have even been a better way to do it but it it is a lot more work so it doesn't really matter you know structurally or anything I don't care that much I'm just trying to do it you know for cosmetic when I come back with the the paint it will help it look a lot nicer
And I'm actually trying to put it on a little thick so that it's a little, it'll be above the surface. That way when I come back and sand it, it will sand rather easily. Pressing it into the holes and then leaving it, you know, just a little bit over the surface. It sticks up just a little bit. So most of what I've used Bondo for, well, I did do some body body filling, you know, back in high school. Um, what I've used it mostly for is either mold making because it works really good to build up parts for sculpting molds that I use for vacuum forming molds. It's actually pretty decent vacuum forming material for you know really low low run stuff which you know in the props that I do is usually extremely low run you know, if I make a dozen of something, that, that's a lot. Alright, that I think will cover this piece. Move on to this one really quick. now because it's starting to kick. And once it starts, it's a little more difficult to work with and it'll be a little bit less sticky. Won't, won't work as well. But you can tell it's starting to get sort of a crunchy look to it. Let me give that a few minutes and then uh, Usually when I'm doing sculpting work, I'll, I'll start off with one of these little cheese grater planers. This won't really work on the metal though. This guy might work, but that sandpaper is really aggressive. This actual Bondo brand had this thing for I don't know how long. Many, many years, probably 20 years. And they work great. So I'll be focusing on sanding the Bondo and not necessarily the metal. Now that it's all cured, it's just a matter of sanding it down. So I've been using a combination of this guy mostly for finishing and this guy, he's got a pretty aggressive grid on him. about all it takes though. And that'll end up just leaving a nice flat smooth surface that I can primer and then paint. Let me go ahead and do that to everything here. And then I'll bring it back and do a quick little show and tell. Well, this took a little bit longer than uh, was probably worth. 
you know, really a lot of this is way more than what it's really worth. You know, if I really wanted to do this in any regular motion, I'd probably just, I, I would have to learn how to TIG weld, which means I'd have to learn how to weld in general. Then I'd have to get a TIG welder and I'd have to learn how to TIG weld. But that I think would probably be able to produce at least as nice of an environment. You know, at least the, the welds would look nice. You know, a lot of these I can't even get into to machine very well, so I'm kind of giving up on doing it overly perfect. A lot of this stuff will be back, you know, at least the very back of it. At least the front part will look pretty nice. And, uh, you know, I got all the holes are, are filled now. Ready to put on a little bit of primer. And uh, get ready to paint. This is just some Ace brand uh, brush-on primer. Rust stop. You know, nothing, uh, nothing exotic or anything. It's just something I had in the shop. It's actually been sitting long enough that it was all caked up on the bottom. It took me a while to get it actually stirred in. And then uh, once I got it all stirred in, I've been just brushing it on. It a uh, relatively thick. Probably thicker than I should layer, but uh, it'll help finish filling in any gaps. All right, so I've got this part here that I've been working on for a while now, and uh, you know these welds are not the greatest, but they seem to be working okay. And I got this, wait, wait a minute, this isn't right. Oh man, I made this thing backwards. Well, I'm gonna make another one, I guess. All right, so now I made another one. Welds are coming out a little bit better, but uh, you know, I still ground this down, kind of shined it up a little bit. Got everything set up, drilled out all the holes, Got this hole tapped here. Wait a minute. That's not the one that's supposed to be tapped. This one's supposed to be tapped. That one's supposed to be a through hole. That's where the one looks like this part's supposed to be tapped. Damn it. Okay, so now I've welded up another one. I've got this one put together. Uh, I'm actually not as embarrassed about the welds but I got the holes drilled correctly that one's tapped even this weld here I'm not completely uh, embarrassed about this one's not so great but it'll be alright Now I've got the uh, tracking alignment wheel holder here that I'll be putting together with this hinge piece. So this will actually still need to be welded in with this piece about right here. I've got everything clamped together and I'll be ready to weld it, ready to weld it together. 